Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Madra. I have an encouraging word for you today, so please stay tuned. Are you targeted on your job? This word is a spinoff that the Lord wanted me to share, and it was it's based on the word that I gave on workplace warfare. And I'm going to link it in the description in case you missed that video. Today, the Holy Spirit impressed on me to share some things that I've experienced from time to time throughout the years when I was working in wicked work environments. And this is just to encourage people who experience similar experiences, but you have no one to talk to. Or you may talk about it and people may be accusing you of making it up or, you know, they may say that you're a person that seeks attention. This applies to you. You know, this word may not be for everyone. I know that, but it applies to someone who needs encouragement in this area. So if this is you, I hope this blesses you. But I want to say this. There are two types of testimonies. One testimony can bear witness that you talk about something and you want to get a validation of your hurt. You have bitterness. You have unforgiveness. I've been there. I've done that. And that's fruitless. But there are testimonies that God want us to open up about and share, you know, because it's going to bless somebody. And we may not necessarily want to share it or talk about it or even remember it. But nevertheless, it's not my will, it's God's will be done. And so if this is going to reinforce and support someone that's going through a hard time, then, I'll, you know, so be it if it's going to help a brother or sister in Christ. So God invited me to forgive and pray for people who hurt me many years ago. And, you know, my heart is okay. But, you know, in the reality of it, when the Lord first starts dealing with you to forgive people who've done things like this to you, it's going to be very hard. And it's a process. It won't be overnight. But every time you think about it, you can pray and ask God to give you the supernatural strength to do it. Because forgiveness is supernatural. It's You have to release it to people who don't deserve it. And so that's not possible in human strength. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. So when you ask God for the grace and the strength, he will by all means give it to you. But you just have to continue to walk in faith by asking him. So I want to share these things so that, you know, you can understand that you're not going crazy. It may really be happening. You just don't know whether or not you're losing it. But God is going to deliver you and heal you. He just wants to encourage you today to let you know that you're okay. You're not making it up and you're not going crazy. So you've been called to serve in a wicked work environment. And you need to know right out of the gate, you cannot fight these type of wicked things on your own. You can't do it in your wisdom and your strength. You need the Bible. You need the Holy Spirit. You need God's grace and help. So you have to submit to God. You have to resist the devil and the devil will flee. But how do you resist the devil? How do you submit to God? How do you do these things? I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to circle back to that powerhouse verse that's based on a verse in the Bible. So I want to read to you a scripture from Acts 23, verse 12. It's about Paul. So a group of Jews bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would rather neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There are times when people who don't even like each other, they will come together for the purpose of killing your destiny, killing your assignment, or killing your dreams. They will bound themselves in ungodly packs just to make you miserable, right? So listen, chosen one, and listen to me good. When God selects you to carry out a spiritual assignment, the enemy, the evil one, the kingdom of darkness, will begin to conspire against you. They'll get in people and make them form packs and groups and gangs to come up against you. This does not apply to every believer, but it applies to somebody that's listening today. 
But like Paul, God will deliver you as you continue to surrender your will and your desires. You may want to lash out or retaliate or fix things against those who ambush you. Yes, but God wants you to endure until he moves them or move you. God is going to move you or move them. Or he's going to change the situation. So these are signs that you may be going through gang stalking on your job. You may be finding strange things in your food that you leave in the office refrigerator. This happens. You may be continuously bumping into the same person or persons in the restroom when these people have no access to you to know that you're going to the restroom. You're wondering, how do they know when I'm going to the bathroom? Number three, people may be plundering through your desk and your folders that you leave out after you go to a break or a lunch or you go home in the evening time. And you know this because you may be the type of person that leaves things a certain way on your desk and in your folders and something looks off when you get back to your desk. Number four, people may be following you and popping up in strange places that you frequent after work hours. Number five, you may find strange smelly substances on your chair, desk, and work area. And we may giggle at some of these things, but when people are actually going through this, it's not very funny. You know, when you go through it, it can be very challenging. Number six, people are lying to your supervisor or your boss to turn them against you. And you experience unexplained hostility or weirdness from your boss. The list can go on and on, but you get the idea. If it resonates with you, it's, you know, it makes sense. When you walk through these things for a consistent period of time, it can weigh on your well-being. So as a believer, you have to go to God for intervention interception and wisdom because each case is different and it requires the right kind of solution. It requires the light of the Holy Spirit to give you revelation on how to survive this type of war zone. For example, until the change comes in your life, the Lord may have you to stop putting your food out or stop using the office refrigerator. He'll give you another solution. If you keep bumping into the same stalkers or people in a restroom, that means someone around you is texting or calling their accomplices to let them know that you're going on break and you're probably headed to the restroom. They work through a network. Someone will follow you to your regular places that you frequent for breaks. You may have to change it up a bit. You may have to go to another floor to go on a bathroom break if that's possible. When they put strange substances around your desk, keep a small can of Lysol or cleaning agent in a bag so that you can sanitize your work area as needed. And on the spiritual side of things, let's be, you know, life is spiritual. You need to anoint yourself with holy oil and be prayed up before you even set foot into a workplace like that. Trust me when I say that. Sometimes you can change your route, go into a different store, you know, go to another grocery store or another mall. Let the Lord guide you. He, he, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's a trainer, a teacher, and he'll warn you when people are about to do things. If you're open to it and if you ask him for his help, don't give up. God will move on your behalf. There's a spiritual principle that will give you a promise of answered prayer. It's called the principle of persistence. You can find it in Luke 18. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. So let me look that up, guys. Luke 18. And you can follow along with me if you need to. Or you can go back and review it when you get a chance. But in verses 1 through 6, it reads, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. 
He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him in the plea, with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Verse seven, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? In verse eight, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Have faith. Keep praying to God consistently and he's going to move on your behalf. If, an, if someone who doesn't even have the Lord in their heart has sense enough to go ahead and do something for somebody to make a judgment, don't you know that God will make a judgment on your behalf when you're his chosen one? James 4 and 7 says, and we're circling back to that verse, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now remember, he may come back at a more opportune time, but at least you will get the breakthrough and move to the next advancement in the spirit and you'll be ready for that time. Believe it. This verse is a blueprint for spiritual warfare. It has the key to your deliverance. And here's the revelation. Surrender what you want to do right now. If, you, if you're going through this ordeal, humble yourself and call out to God for help, grace, strength, clarity, and peace. Seek his plan and see why this is happening. And he'll show it to you. And he'll show you who to avoid. He'll show you what to do and when to do it. And do this persistently like it tells us in Luke 18. We're going to Luke 18 the thing. Command the devils to get behind and go. Tell them to get behind you and go in Jesus' name. And you can do this under your breath. You can pray at lunch, pray at breaks. You can actually get closer to God in this type of situation. And that's what's going to happen. He's going to move you to a whole nother level in the spirit. And you don't, you won't even realize how closer you're growing to God when you're going through ordeals like this. But when you come out on the other side, you're going to realize just how strong the Lord's hand has been moving in your life all along. A miracle will happen. God will show you that there are more angels with you then there are devils against you in that place. The angel of the Lord will begin to stalk the devils that are using the willing people to stalk you. The enemies of darkness will encounter your God that fights on your behalf. Psalm 34 stanza six says, the angel of the Lord will pursue them on their path in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for provision, protection. We thank you for grace and clarity in their lives, Lord. Help them to always to walk in love and forgiveness, to release their pursuers to you on a daily basis, Father God. We bless them that curse us. We release our heart, soul, mind, and strength to you, Jesus, as a sacrifice acceptable in your sight. Amen. Listen, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening to me. Gang stalking and bullying is different from conflict. It occurs when a group just repeatedly hurts or even humiliates a targeted individual. Harassment, whether it's direct or indirect, can cause mental and even physical harm. It can negatively impact an entire school, work, church, or organization. If there is no one that you feel safe talking to and you feel hopeless, please seek out a trusted person for reinforcement and support. You're not alone. As long as God is on the throne, there's hope. We have to join together against this type of spirit. If you have any input, feel free to comment below.